This image was taken at the Vile Arboretum in Augusta, Maine. It is a great location. This particular trail is called the Hoster Trail, and it has many varieties of Hoster along it, and all of them are well identified. There are lots of other trails, and it's a great place to go to take pictures. Ansel Adams used to talk about something called pre-visualization, and the concept behind that was that before you take the picture, you should try and anticipate what the final product will look like. Um, now, he was talking about working in the darkroom, but I was walking down this particular trail and noticing how the light was brighter outside and the light at the end of the trail, and, I'm, and thinking, this would make a great image. So, I had to pre-visualize how I was going to do it, and I had a thought in my mind of what I wanted the image to look like. Then, I looked at the complexity of the scene, and the biggest problem was the difference between the deep shadows and the bright highlights. You can see how at the end of the trail here the path is blown out, but here I maintain the detail. It would have been impossible to cover this with one exposure. So what I did is I took two images, one image for the shadow detail on the inside of the path and another one for the detail out in the bright sunlight. A lot of times when you make a painting, you, you, you take a lot of detail out. But for me, it's very important to start with as much detail as you can get in the beginning. That way you have more choices on what you want to maintain and what you want to obscure. So this is why the two exposures. Now in Photoshop, you can merge these two together and make a what they call an HDR image, a high dynamic range image. And it's pretty simple. All you have to do is have both images open. And you go on up and you go to Automated and you go down to Merge HDR Pro. You say click on Add Open Files then click OK. And now the computer will merge these two images together and these weren't exactly in perfect registration but it will fix that for you. And here it is. Once you've done this just click OK. And now it's going to merge these two images together for you and reopen it in Photoshop. So here's the image. and we can see that we have detail in the shadow area, detail out in the highlight area. I'm going to pick up a little bit more detail out there than this air now. So we've merged the two images together. Now I'm going to close these two. Now the next adjustment I usually make when I'm going to work on the image is I go on up and I go to image, adjust, shadow highlight. And again, this is so that I can control where and how much detail I have. So the shadows look pretty good, so I'm going to turn that down, but I do want to pick up more detail in the highlight area. And you can see now how this is picking up that detail out there in the sunshine. And the object is to sort of try and create a flattish image. You know, that isn't real contrasty, but gives you as much detail in as many areas as possible. Click OK. And now I have the tonal range image that I want to start with. I have detail in the highlights, detail in the shadows. Now there's a few little things in here that annoy me like this little label here. So I'm just going to take my clone tool load it and take that out. And there's another one back here, so I'll just hit that one. So now I'm ready to start the painting or enhancing process.
This is where I need to clarify my approach or my philosophy about digital art. We're not going to create a digital painting because we're not going to use a stylus to change this image to this image. We're going to use software. We're going to use apps to create this image. Um, but we're going to use apps that give us a tremendous amount of flexibility and we'll still add some textures and put a little spot color in. So I would consider this an enhanced digital image, not a digital painting. Now the two pieces of software we're going to use is Alien Skin Snap Art 4. Um, this is a tremendous piece of software. It gives you incredible flexibility and almost total control of how it's going to manipulate the image. Um, it, it, at this point I think it's the most versatile piece of software on the market for creating an enhanced digital image. Now the other piece of software I'm going to use is called Topaz Simplify and it does one thing that Alien Skid does not and that helps break the image down into blocks of color and create dividing lines. Um, I use this as the first step to simplify, as the name says, the image. Now both of these come with free downloads to, for, to test them. Um, so download them, try them out, and see what you think. I think they're well, both well worth the money um, because you're going to use them a lot if you, if, if you like them. Um, but so enough about the software. We're going to start manipulating the image now and uh, we're going to create an enhanced digital image, not a digital painting. Now this is only my definition and my way of separating my work so that when I hang it people know what they're buying. For the sake of brevity I'm going to do a summary of the steps I went through to produce this particular image. I'm going to do in-depth videos of each step so that people can choose which information they want and don't have to listen to the whole thing. I'm going to turn off all of the layers so that we can walk our way up through them. Now this is what we started with. As I look at this image I know it needs to be color corrected. It's too, it's too blue. But I know when I start adding in the textured layers that that's going to totally change the color. So I'm not going to worry about doing any color correction at this point. Now this is a great little feature that Adobe has that's available if you're using uh, the cloud version of Photoshop. Uh, it's, it's called uh, Adobe Paper Texture Pro and it's free. That's the great thing about it. But what I love about it is it gives me all my textures where I can see them. And all I have to do is click on them to see what they're going to look like. So if I try this one, puts it in. I don't want it. If I click on it, it takes it out. So it allows me to very quickly take a look at how things are going to look. But there'll be a video on this one, how to, how to use it and where to get it. These are the textures that I decided to use. These are just pictures of uh, cloud scenes of my own that I can use to introduce the texture of sunlight. And we can see how this increases the, the dappled look in, this, in the trees because I'm actually using a picture of the sky to create the texture. I wanted to warm the scene up and I wanted more of the warmer color on the path so then I added this one. And that that's, brings in a lot of very interesting pinks and things in the, tr in the trees. So these are the two textures that I decided to use. I think they're both, one's on multiply, which puts the color into the lighter areas. And the other one's on overlay, which tends to bright, brighten the whole image. Once I got done with this, once I add them, I almost always, in fact, I do a lot of shadow highlight adjustments during the process it's because I want to try and get the tonality where I want it to be. So I added a shadow highlight adjustment, I mean a, probably, excuse me, a 
brightness contrast adjustment and that brought the contrast up where I wanted to see it. Then I merged the layers. I had to merge the layers because when I use these other two applications I have to work from an image. So I went in and I did simplify and the object of the simplify was to try and break up some of the blocks of detail into sections of color. Um, there is too much detail in the image for the intended outcome which is for it to look like a watercolor. So I use simplify and we can see how simplify breaks up doesn't necessarily remove detail, it breaks the detail up into blocks of color. And I really like that. So I've used Simplify to break up my detail into blocks of color. Now the next one is the uh, snap art adjustment and there are many 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 different adjustments or uh, filters that we can add but what I decided to do was add watercolor and we can see how this has softened the image now in these two they're under the filters so that's not going to refer to them as as filters under these two filters there are many many adjustments in them so that you can totally customize how it's going to look you don't just have to click on and accept it. You have all the control you'd ever want to make this your image. And that's what's the important part of this process is, is to, if I can tell what filter you use to create the image, it's not your image. And or I should say my image, that's the only the way I feel about it. So I've added these two in and I've got the basic of what I want. Now, as I look at it, I want more blue in the sky. So I just put in a spot color layer and add a little blue in here and I wanted to see what it's going to look like with the watercolor texture so then I went in and added a texture so now we can see that we have a watercolor textured paper in there and then I wanted to do a color balance and these are really important you have to do these color balances because they they're what make the colors sing it makes the colors harmonize and look better so I added this and I'm going to show you how this works. If I double click on this, it's going to come up. And the great thing about this color balance is, is that you can work in your shadows, your highlights, and your midtones. So if I looked at this and said, well, I think I want to warm up the shadows some more, I can come down here now and just move this over and warm them up. If I decided I want them cooler, I can go like, take it this way. So you get to adjust it, but you always want to play with all three because it's how they work in relationship to one another. Never change one without seeing what the other ones will do. Now there it is. That's that's what I would want right there. But the thing is I can now go in into my highlights and say well let's see what happens if I try and punch up the highlights a little bit. Oh, yeah. See how I started bringing this detail out in here? So you gotta play with them to see what you're getting. So I'm gonna leave those that way go back to my layers so I made another merged layer now in painting if you want to make an image colors all work together there's something called glazing and that's where you, you mix a very thin color and you paint it over the majority of the image and what that does is it helps unify all the colors well in this particular one I don't like the variation of colors in the path that this gray bothers me this is a little too orange so what I did is I picked a, an orange yellow and painted it on a layer and put it in the image to create this harmonizing effect down the path now I also added the color in other areas as you can see I'll turn it on and off you can, I added some of the color up in here I pulled some down into the shadow detail to put some of that value in there now what this does is it helps pull the whole thing together makes it look like a painting makes it look like it works together and then I did a hue and saturation and that's it that's the process that I went through to do this now I'm going to break this up into chunks and do videos on each section like I'll do a video on the filters I'll do a video on the simplify a video on the snap out I'll talk about this color balance I mean this color uh, addition here 
and I'll probably do that in conjunction with the canvas. Um, so I'll break this down into separate tutorials so that you can do each one and pick up the technique and apply it individually. I hope this was helpful. Um, there'll be links on how to get to the other videos.